Hi, I'm Dr. Paul Hartch, and I wanted to talk about hyperbaric oxygen therapy for coronavirus and ask why might it work? Well, to answer that question, we need to know what hyperbaric oxygen is. And the answer to that question has eluded science for about 358 years, at least until now. So what is HBOT? It's a treatment for wounds in any location in the body and of any duration. And if we look at the use of it, at least in the United States, where it's fairly limited, these are the typically reimbursed indications. If you look at them, they're all wound indications. So air or gas embolism, a type of stroke with air, carbon monoxide poisoning, crush injuries, the bends, uh, problem wounds like diabetic foot wounds, exceptional blood loss, people suddenly lose a lot of blood and have anemia, uh, radiation tissue damage, flaps and grafts that aren't working, it's a type of wound, thermal burns, an obvious wound, central retinal artery occlusion is a stroke of the eye type of wound with low blood flow and oxygen, and then sudden hearing loss. Well, if you look at the last four I've highlighted in green, they're all infection type wounds. So gas gangrene we're well familiar with, usually seen in war wounds, but any type of trauma can do it the flesh-eating bacteria with necrotizing soft tissue infection, bone infections, which is osteomyelitis, and finally brain abscesses. All wound indications, acute, subacute, or chronic. And internationally, many more wound indications. Well, what's COVID-19? It's a wound in the lungs. And we don't have to look very far to understand that. Here's the normal honeycomb structure of a healthy lung and here's COVID-19, where all of that fine honeycomb is this thick and swollen purple tissue, the air sacs in white, filled with fluid. And you see that on chest x-ray of this Chinese patient over just four days' time, the lungs completely filling up with this inflammation and fluid. So how do we heal wounds with hyperbaric oxygen? Well, you have to grow new tissue to heal the wound, and you have to treat the cause of the wound, the underlying cause. Well, how do we heal COVID-19 wounds with HBOT? We've got to treat the underlying infection and inflammation. And while we don't have an antiviral treatment, at least a good one, we can at least treat the inflammation and do some other things in the COVID-19 lung, like increase oxygen level. Well, if we look at stubborn wounds, wounds that don't heal, how do we grow new tissue in stubborn wounds? We have to make cells divide and multiply to make new blood vessels, new connective tissue, bone, and skin. And in the case of COVID-19, we have to make new uh, lining to the, uh, of the lung. So the cells that line the lung have to be treated and rehabilitated. Well, how do we make cells divide and multiply? We've got to go through our DNA, our genes. And everybody's heard about that, but this is a cell, a pink cell, and in the center of it's the nucleus and all those little black uh, structures are our chromosomes. We've seen them. Well, these chromosomes actually is coiled up and wadded a double molecule here, which is our DNA, which is in a twisting kind of strand. Well, along the DNA, in segments here, are individual genes. And everybody's heard of genes. Genes run our body. We used to think that they were just used for reproduction, that you really didn't need them until uh, you finally had to you know, make another person. Um, but it turns out genes are running our body every minute of the day, every second. And in fact, we have 19,000 genes that code for proteins, and they're being read like a ticker tape to make these proteins. Well, everybody's also heard of gene therapy. Gene therapy tries to replace the protein or makes the protein that a bad defective gene can't make. So gene therapy is usually done for a single gene defect. Ever heard of gene therapy for 8,101 genes? Well, that's called hyperbaric oxygen therapy. But HBOT affects 8,101 good genes. And we had an idea of this in 1994 when people were trying to explain how we were healing diabetic foot wounds, for instance, and radiation wounds. We knew we had to grow new tissue. You knew you had to stimulate the cells to divide and multiply. And so the idea came out that hyperbaric oxygen may be a gene stimulant. Well, finally, in 2009, Dr. Godman and her colleagues took the cells that line the smallest blood vessels in our body, put them in a Petri dish, and gave them a hyperbaric treatment, and were able to measure 
8,101, or 40% of all of the genes in our DNA, all of the cells in our body, all the chromosomes, over 40% of those genes get either turned on or turned off by one hyperbaric treatment. And if we looked at the largest clusters of the genes that were turned on, they were the growth and repair genes and the anti-inflammatory genes. And the largest clusters of the genes turned off were the genes that caused inflammation and caused cell death. So with every single hyperbaric treatment in every wound in the body, any patient, we are suppressing inflammation, stimulating growth of new tissue, and stopping cell death. So go back to our question, what is HBOT? As it turns out, it's the oldest gene therapy known to man. And so how might HBOT work in COVID-19 pneumonia? It's by treating the lung wounds and the intense inflammation in COVID-19 pneumonia. And that's exactly what the Chinese showed. And this is exactly what uh, Dr. Cunningham showed with Spanish flu patients in 1918 who were dying. If we look across the top row, here are five of these Chinese patients and the CTs of their lung. And you could see all of the white areas, which is that pneumonia and inflammation that I showed you on the slides. On the bottom is within one or two days after their hyperbaric treatment. And you see the white improving and going away. And of course, when this happened, their oxygen levels went up and the patient survived and got discharged from the hospital. So what are we doing with hyperbaric oxygen and COVID-19? We're treating the underlying pneumonia infection and healing the wound in the lung. And with it, we treat the oxygen level that, it, that then allows the patients to survive.